<clears throat> incredible afternoon. Actually, it's incredible evening. It's after 5 p.m. Uh-oh, what am I sliding on? Oh! Oh, no. Hold on. Definitely can't slide over that. I need that cord. Whoa. All righty. There we go. Incredible evening, everyone. All right. So, came on. Um... Because it's Wednesday, and I haven't done like an official live because I wasn't feeling well yesterday, Monday, and then yesterday I was like working on some stuff. You guys saw the fans, um, but that's about it. So I just wanted to come on live and say hello to y'all, answer any questions, do my general q and I normally do a Q&A on Monday, but of course I was not able to. Um, so we're going to do it right now, right before my class to kind of get me into teaching mode tonight we're working on um we're reviewing edit points again so um hello and welcome i am shakia the professor of hs inc 365 llc we are the parent company of silaholics anonymous which is my platform where i have been teaching you guys how to use silhouette studio the silhouette cameo machines for the past seven years um, we are also the home of the Honesty Speaking product line and 365 Creative Academy, which is my online platform where I host different classes and workshops and things like that um, for all things creative. It is truly to help you unlock your creativity 365 days of the year. Um, in this Q&A, you know, you can ask any question if you're having troubles or you're struggling with a particular design or understanding um, a specific tool or how to do something in Silhouette Studio. Now is a great time to ask because you are getting access to me um, who I, I know they pay for my class. I have a group where others pay to be able to have access to me and have me um, and I'm offering that to you, of course, whenever I do these live videos, it's for free for you guys, free 99. So go ahead and post any questions that you guys have. Drop a hey, how you doing? Let me know who is watching live. I know it's kind of like a weird time because some people are getting off, probably still driving home from work. Some people are still like looking at the clock, like ready to get off of work. But if you are able to <coughs> watch and listen. And take advantage of this um, session. Feel free to post your questions. Whether it is sublimation related, silhouette related, business related, um, print and cut related, eco solving printer related, um, troubleshooting questions. It's an open forum um, and you're just able to ask someone who is really well versed in so many different areas. You know, just be able to pick my brain and ask questions. All right. So um, the floor is yours uh, for those who have questions, but we're going to go over and while we're waiting for your questions and things to come in, I'm going to say hello to a few folk. Um, hello, hello, incredible evening, incredible evening. Hey, just say, watching from West Virginia. Thank you for letting me know where you are watching from. Um, hey, 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 fist bump. How you doing, Hans? Um, what material do you use for grad cap toppers? Um, I use a wide variety of things. So most times for uh, toppers that are for girls, I just sublimate to glitter cardstock. I get the thicker ones. It's like a, a 12 by uh, 24 from and I just make it the nine or like nine and a quarter. And I normally just sublimate to the glitter cardstock for uh, grad toppers for ladies. Um, if it is for a young man, I have a uh, pressed easy subly to cardstock so that it gives it more weight. And it's something that can be taken on and off because some people actually can't have it on their grad caps. So I'll take easy subly and press it to <clears throat> a piece of cardstock and sublimate to that. Um, I've also made ones that are a little bit more, I have a little bit more shine to it. And I will laminate uh, cardstock and then sublimate to that as well. You can also ow, do that method just by printing. If you have a wide format printer, 
you can print to cardstock as well. So I use a wide variety of things for the grad cap toppers. Good question. So there's no one thing that you have to use. Hey, 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 incredible evening. Welcome, welcome. Hello and welcome. Um, been doing your course and it's great. I spent three days on day six, but I truly understand it. Been practicing tons. Okay, wait, I have to go back and look and see what day six was. All right, hold on one second. What was day six? So I can see what is on day. Oh, oh wait, uh, hold on. No, we're going back up here. Um, oh, modify tools. Oh yes. That's a big one. Uh oh, what happened there? Um, Modify tools, so comp, uh, crop and compound fast, understanding those. So yeah, the weekend ones are probably ones that you're gonna spend a couple days on. Um, I will say, don't spend too much time on it. So the, and yes, my, my name is gonna change because I had to switch to a different um, theme, a different uh, brand. So don't spend too much time on one particular day, right? You have unlimited access to it. Maybe go through it and you might not understand it the first time, but what I will say is once you go through a lot of the other trainings, like the other modules, and those things come back up, it will help it make more sense. So going forward, like let's say like, it's like uh, well, I'm not, what was the weekend for that one? But like the next major one, I want to say is like tracing. Um, you know, go through the steps and as far as like walking through it, how I did it. And as you're going through other things, like it will all mesh together. You're like, oh, that's why in this one we did X, Y, and Z. So try not to spend too, too much time on it because you can always go back. And every time that you go back in there, especially after you learn a new skill, it's going to make that particular module that more clear for you. And you'll see it in a different light. So going for it, try, you know, just recommend, you know, try not to spend too much time on it so that you can progress through it and it'll all make sense for you. Okay. All right, let's see. Yeah, because when you get to that point editing, I mean, like with all the stuff that's in there, you'll probably want to like spend a couple of days, but like don't let it stress you out too much. <clears throat> Any other questions? We're actually... Um, one of the other major, like I said, edit points, and we're going to go over edit points in my bachelor's class today. What am I looking for? Oh, I was looking for my phone. Um, they are available on our website. So same place you purchase access to the course. So you're just going to go there in the search. You can type in fade, or if you go to like the top where it says HS Inc. Digital, click there and then just go through the multiple pages and you'll see the fade bars. Um, I've used a wide variety. Like, there is no specific paper, guys. I don't want you guys to get kind of caught up on the paper that I use because you might not be able to find that. If you have a paper that works great for you, I have tried out so, 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 so many papers. I go through a lot, which is why the other day I ended up picking up like the wrong paper. That particular one was done on Koala's, I think it was a single-sided glossy. I don't remember what the weight is, but I've done them on all sorts of paper. I've done them on hammer mill. I've done them on my navigator paper. I've done them. I have one that's called print works. Um, I have printery. Like I have a lot of paper. I am a, like, I'm a paper connoisseur. Um, I like to try out different papers and just see the different qualities of them. Some of they print differently. They take the colors differently. Some papers are pure white. Some are off white. Some have Navigator one has more of like a bluish tone to it, but it prints so awesome. Um, 
some of the glossy papers that I use don't take, like some of them work better with, I use premium matte and others, the colors come out better if I use a uh, glossy. So try not to focus so much on that because what if you can't find that particular paper because, you know, I've recommended it. It's in my Amazon store or things like that. Try to find the best paper for you, but there is no, um, particular weight. There's no particular finish. I actually prefer matte paper, but I did use glossy for those, but I'm actually more of a matte girl. I really, really, really love the way matte, um, the colors look on matte paper versus glossy. Um, what do I think of the Cameo 4 Pro? Um, I'm not a big fan of it. There's just a lot, like a lot of the ways that it was made. I'm not a big fan. Now, doesn't mean that it doesn't work for others just in my um, expert opinion and using it and using other cutting machines. It's just so many design flaws with it. Um, one of the main ones being just the tracking on it for it to be 24 inches and it starts to like shift and stuff the way the rollers are. So I have been very, very vocal about the fact that I am not a fan of the pro and the way that they designed it. All right, so um, I don't really do a lot of classes where I focus on the machine, right? Um, and like most of like, if you have issues like troubleshooting, why it's not cutting, a lot of my video YouTube or Facebook um, or just asking the question in my group is where you're going to find that at because every machine is different, right? People are using like like with the four. I don't use the auto blade. The auto blade cuts totally different than a ratchet blade. I and mean, I prefer to use the ratchet blades. Um, I'm not one where I try to prolong the life of blades. I rather like if it gets to a point to where it's just not cutting well and I've done a lot of cutting on it, I'm just going to change out blades. So a new blade versus an old blade will cut totally, 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 totally different. Um, <clears throat> and machines are just different. So so trying to identify the right force, the right blade depth, because I don't know your blade can sometimes be a bit harder. What I do, however, do is teach you the machine. I teach you about changing settings and understanding the settings, how to load your machine. Now, that is a totally separate one from learning the program. If you're wanting to know more about the machine, how it works, understanding your cut settings, um, my out-of-the-box uh, class, Going to be the best option. Um, in that one, I did it live twice, like that day. So you're going to get the AM and the PM session. There might be questions in one or the other that you know might be the same question that you had, but it's called out of the box. That's where I really break down the machine. But as far as understanding the program, um, I know a lot of people when they teach cricket, they kind of teach it all together. Okay, let's start in design space, and then what you do with the machine. But Silhouette Studio is a decent, a halfway decent um, graphic designing software, and you can use it for um, like uh, just creating digital things, uh, creating your stuff for print. I just did a service program. Um, um, I did the cover of it in Silhouette Studio. There's so many things that you can do. You can create PNGs. You can create SVGs. So you, I look at it as being a totally separate thing from the machine. For me, there are two different things. Program is one, machines are another. So you'll have to take two different things if you're wanting to know about the program and then also how to run the machine. Why doesn't so SEO print set, wait, print set have a 13 by 19? What can I choose instead? Um, so Silver Studio does not have its own print settings. Um, it will printer. So if you're saying you're going to print and it's not there, remember that if you're using version 4.4, you're going to see like the print preview, ignore that. Um, where if you're in a version where you still have, or it says print and then settings, ignore the settings, go to print. And then whatever settings your printer is able to do, it will allow you to do that as far as printing. Silhouette is not a printer, so it won't affect print settings at all. Now, if you're talking about your design page size and setting that, that's something different, but that has nothing to do with the printing part. Is it the design page part that you have um, issues with setting? Uh, 
Okay. So the reason why, like, if you have the newer version, let me go over to here. Um, when I hit print, it cuts off. Yes. So ignore, it's going to cut it off, right? Because you haven't gone to those settings yet. So if you were able to, so that's, so this is why you guys probably also don't get the answers that you need because I was ready to show you the design page size because you said you don't know how to set the design page size, but obviously you have it set. It's just that it's cutting it off when you print. You guys have, like most people probably won't go and ask probing questions to really get to the root of what you need. So I'm going to just show it um, just for uh, teaching purposes. If you're wanting to do 13 by 19 with the newer version of Silhouette Studio, um, if you have, let's say like a Cameo machine set for width, because a regular Cameo machine does not go past 12 inches, if you have like, whether it's a mat or without a mat, it doesn't really go past 12. So if I put 13 here, it's going to revert back to 12. Even if I take the mat to none, it won't let me go. Um, well, it'll let me go width wise. But like I said, if I go here and I go 13, see, it's going to revert back to 12 because that's as big, that's as wide as that machine cuts. So it's not going to go any wider or longer than that, depending on like the orientation. So if I go to portrait, it's going to switch it and this will never go above 12. So if you want it to go above 12 because you're trying to do a print and you're not doing a print and cut, you're going to go to none and then you can set this to whatever size. So if you're just doing a print, you're going to go to none. Set your machine to none that way. You can even set this to 120, you know, um, the width to 120 if you're going to make a banner or anything like that. Um, now I do you say you're using the pro. So yes, I, I can't show you pro because I don't use version 4.4, but even with that, if you have it set to pro, you have it set to the 12 by 24 inch mat, or even with no mat and you set the 13 by 19, when it comes to, again, when it comes to printing, I'm going to purposely set this to, um, let, let's just go 13 by 19. So you're going to notice that my print border is right here. You are going to ignore that. This will always show the last print set, print setting that you used. So when you go and you hit print, mine is not going to do it. When I go to print, I'm going to go straight to the preferences. What you're seeing is the print preview from Silhouette Studio. Ignore that print preview. It's actually very, 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 very not useful at all. I was about to say something different, but I'm going to be very nice in this. It's not useful at all really. Um, so what you'll do is you'll still hit print. It is going to cut it off as it is seeing the last print setting. So once you go, you hit print, you will then get your preferences. Once you go to your preferences and you set your print settings here, it will print the right way. If you want to be on the safe side, you're like, man, I'm not sure. I don't trust this. Use Epson's print preview. And then once you go to hit print, it's going to show you a true print preview before you hit print and then you can hit print. But what I want to show is you see how this is here. Now you can do this with PCs. You cannot do this with Mac. With Macs, you have to go into settings and then set it to it. But with PCs, I'm going to go to my 13 by 19 setting just so that it says 13 by 19. And then I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to hit cancel. Watch what my print border does. Boom, it jumps. So it is based off of the last actual like print settings that were set. That's what I was going to show. So if your last one was shorter, it's going to cut it off. Just keep going through the print process and it will print out correctly. If your preferences does not look like this, um, I'm not sure um, if you're, what printer are you using? So that will be the, the other big question is what printer are you using? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, hello. Oh, hi, Professor. I'm about to buy a Workforce 7820 for sublimation. Can you recommend a program that I can use? It, uh, are there any good free ones? Uh, hello. Silhouette Studio. And I'm not even sponsored by them, but I absolutely love the program. Like you can do so much in it. I do all of my designing. Like, well, I'll say like, 
83.65%, really more like 93.65% of the things that I design are done right in Slow Studio. It's 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 amazing. And they have the free version. You can also get the um you can get the upgrades. So it's a really good program to learn. It's a really good basic software. And then if you want to then move on, there are a lot of like reasons why you would move on to others, like being able to put in color profiles if you need them. Things like Photoshop, Illustrator, Corel, Draw, Affinity. I have all, actually have all of those programs. Any program that you can think of, I probably have it on here. Um, I don't think I installed Inkscape or GIMP on this one, but it's actually on my laptop. But every program that you can think of, I probably have it. But Celestio is a really great place to start. And don't forget to get your cartridges and your chips from our website, shop.hs8365.com. The chip sets are $60 a set and they're the XL rated. And we do also have the cartridges and of course the ink. Um, professor, miss you best friend. Uh, someone did a funeral program where they use so many elements. I looked at it and said, I could have done this with all way. I have done this with all the techniques I've been taught by the professor. Um, yeah, I mean, some, um, the one that I just did, hold on, let me, it, it, the one I have now is out of order, but I'm not, I don't really do a lot of elements. Hold on one second. Let me go grab it. Whoa. All right. So, like, this is one of um, the young ladies that went to my church. And I actually absolutely love, 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 love this company. Um, it's called Keepsakes Obituaries. Um, Keepsakes Obituaries with a personal touch. So they 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 um, specialize in obituaries. So they're not like one where you go there, you can get like some other stuff. Like they specialize in service programs and so like theirs is one to where they use like a lot of different elements and stuff like that so it's like multiple pictures of her you can tell in the background there's like a kind of like it looks more like, like a beach scene it looks like it's like um palm trees or something like the leaves and then there's like clouds and stuff here i can see the palm tree leaves the doves and then there's like a glitter um at the bottom um the back kind of has same thing that's on the front but you can see more of it because it's less picture so you can clearly see like the leaves the skyline and then like the the, <clears throat> the faded out glitter and then like the inside it's pretty much all the same like for each one right and then of course she added like little elements like the flowers and stuff and then like how they did their pictures and stuff like that. so you can do backgrounds um so the one that i just did um, for a service that is this weekend. I'm <clears throat> everyone has their own style. I'm a little bit more simplistic for the most part. Um, I really want to show another one, but I'm always so leery because I mean she's one of my students and I know that one was like really personal for her. Um, but I know my family, this is my family for these. They don't really care like that. But like with my aunts, um, she had a, like I put glitter here. There's like a skyline. This was like on the front of hers, like even though this I have no idea how I did this upside down, but like with her, so you can see like, it's the same exact thing that's on here. It's just without all the others. And like, this is where the actual like obituary part was. Um, so you can add a lot of elements. When I did this one, I didn't add a lot of background to it. So it's like, it's her picture. Um, there's like some clouds, there's like a dove, there's some roses. Cause that's one of the things they requested. Um, and then like on the back, it's just them. Um, you can see like her picture there, but it's a solid background. And then for the inside, which this was, this one particularly almost printed incorrectly, but it's fine. Um, so like I, the way I have like mine here, this is kind of a signature one for me. Um, and just having their pictures, but my background has nothing. I mean, there's a little, like rows there and the colors taken down. Um, but all of this um, is just plain and it's still 
impactful. And then here is like the center part and how I do the pictures and stuff like that. Like this, all of this here, I could do in Silhouette Studio. This part I had to go to Photoshop for. And then like on this part, again, very, very simple, just adding pictures. And there's really nothing to the background. And of course, these are signature every page. I just put that rose there um, just so that it's cohesive throughout the entire um, thing. But you don't have to add a lot of elements to it. And this can, like, this truly could be done in Silhouette. Or the reason why, like, Silhouette Studio could be problematic for these is the amount of text. And Silhouette is not great on handling a lot of text. So a lot of times I'll create, like, my foundation, I'll create the background, and then the text just goes on top. But because of how I did this one, um, well, actually, even before, I would do the text in a different program and add the shadow. So there's like shadows so that you, it makes it to where you can read it a little bit better. So um, you can do it kind of both ways. I have templates that have elements to it and then some that don't. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you have a sawgrass. So that's going to be a little bit different, uh, of course, because I have an Epson. I have a sawgrass. You see it right there. I haven't set it up. So you're going through, um, like, if you're going through, like, their print manager, it still shouldn't matter. Um, don't go by Silhouette's print preview. You, once you go into uh, Sawgrass's print manager, everything will be there. And then go through its print. If it offers a print preview, go through their print preview, and it should show you how. Now, if it's still cut off on your printer's print preview, then you need to cancel it and then figure out where the issue is. But yeah, don't worry. Your, your purposes aren't going to look like that at all because it's a totally different um, printer. I use um, uh, uh, an Epson and you can, it'll somewhat look like that, like for Sawgrass, because you can print directly from a program, but it's better if you go through like their print manager. Um, I'm challenging myself to complete one of the designs that I've been avoiding due to fear of failure. I need to get out of my own head. I'm a student of the professor. I need to do this for me. Exactly. Unlock your creativity. Just have at it. And if you fail, and it's not a failure, right? So even if you complete the project, do you know how many times I designed something and the first draft is not the final one? Or sometimes I'm not satisfied with it, right? And I'll give my client like all these different options and then they'll come back and say, okay, yep, I want this one. So let me show you. And that's actually what happened with, um, hold on. That's what happened with this, right? So I'm gonna show you if my phone doesn't die. I'm so used to like having like the actual like fat head ones, right? So when I, hold on one second. My kid is out there screaming like he has no sense. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay. So when I sent her the, the mock-ups, right? I did that one, but that was my, that was my first one. But I went in, I'm like, okay, well, everyone wants like the fat head and all that stuff. So I end up doing it where it's somewhat the same, but it, you know, it's kind of the same elements with the, the colorful name, the chalkboard. I end up editing the big chalkboard to make the small one just for class of 2022. I still have that part at the top. I just put like an outline, which is actually the chalkboard around it thinking, okay, maybe she wants like, you know, just a really big image and, you know, of her child's face and all that stuff. And then she went with the original. So don't overthink it. Um, don't, you know, think of it as failure because you're learning. Every time that you design something, um, it will be to where, like, you know, you understand the program a little bit better. You may not use those elements. Like, you may do all this work. It's not failure if you don't use it. I've designed things sometimes where it, I've never used the elements for that particular design. But then I go back for some of this. I'm like, ooh, I remember doing this. Let me go back and find that. And I will mix and match. I mean, this design is a mixture. Um, this is a mixture of one that I did for Zion Imani. 
something else. So this is a lot of different elements like put together. So don't ever consider it to be failure, especially if you are still learning the program and just becoming more comfortable with it. Every time you go and you get into that program and you make something, it should help you understand the program a little bit better. So it's always lessons, always, always lessons that you're learning in it. Um, all right. So can you explain to me about your vault and what comes in it? So I've had a lot of people that have always asked about just templates and stuff. I don't really have a lot of design elements in it. I was going to my design but one i'm still on the fence because it just takes a lot like if i was someone that just sat around and did graphic designs it would be different be layers to what i do in business but i've created a lot of designs like i mean like this one so many people inbox me ask me about it that i created it like i did one that i could put in the vault and it's kind of like um it's kind of like a, you know, a template or like a file, but I typically don't really have these in there. Um, hold on one second. Sorry, y'all. My kids are outside just, just making, just running amok, um, which I'm not going to too much mess with them. I mean, they are just playing, but he knows to stay away from my door when I'm recording. Um, so the vault is more so like templates where they're properly sized for things. Most people find that they can't really design inside things because they don't have the right sizing. So you still have to know how to design. I don't have a lot of elements. A lot of times I'm pulling elements from different places. Um, if I get them from Creative Fabric, if I get them from uh, design bundles, if I get them from like the internet, if I get them from PNG tree. So sometimes the things that I use, they're not all mine. Like, I mean, like with this one, um, although I do pay for commercial use for them, but like I pulled this from the internet. Um, I might have like the sizing for you, or I might have like the, like the, um, this section here, but I mean, I can't give you the words because that's still your font. Um, you know, I might include this in like the little flares and stuff like that so that you can mix and match or like the dove. So I give you templates where you can freely design. My goal is to have you guys learn to unlock your creativity and learn to design on your own and put things together. So I don't provide a lot of templates where everyone, I mean, especially with this grad stuff, and like half of the graduation stoles and shirts I see, they look exactly the same. <coughs> because everyone is using the same exact template this, which has the same font, the same layer styles, the same everything, and they all look the same. Like, I would not be able to look at any of them and really see someone's personality and to know that, like, okay, hey, this person designed this. When I go and I look at different, like, um, service programs, like, like, ones that are like this, I always know when it's keepsake. Like, she has, like, well, I guess it's a girl, a woman. They have, like, signature things that I know, like, is there's mainly, like, the part they put on the bottom forever, like, um, what is it saying? In loving mem um in loving remembrance and then forever in our hearts, like stuff like that. Cause that's on like every like on all those pages. When I see those, it's like it's signature to her. I know that like that's their design. My goal is to give you the tools to give you like ideas to help you think outside the box that you can create your own. So my template, like you know, if it's the stole. So that you can have it be where it's not you're just creating in a box and you can really have it be made to that you can have trim for it there's a stole in there there's fans but you can add your pictures you can change the colors so i make it a little bit easier for you as far as like not having to um for certain things like um put an offset or put a shadow all you do is just like change the colors on it that's where a, how a lot of the templates are set up um it's like for chip bags where it's already the size of it it's the sections my Welchers, it already has like the background. We can have it really look like um, a fruit snack. So it's different. It's a lot of different elements. Um, right now, it's like the majority of the ones are ones that people have asked me about like so, 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 so much. And I started with those and I'm always constantly, constantly, constantly adding to it. So it's like a never ending thing. There's always going to be something new added to it. I originally brought your course for summation projects, but now I will use it for everything else. Awesome. Hello, Chanel. How are you? 
If I purchased a printer for Eco Solvent, would I be able to print my own yard signs? I'm sure you answered this before, but I mean, wait, before I didn't have it in my notes. So if you're purchasing one that you're converting, like the Epson one, no, you will not be able to use it for yard signs. But if you purchase an actual Eco Solvent printer, like a Roland BN20, which is the lowest model, like the least expensive one, one before you get to like the big boys, with those, yes, you can print for yard signs. But a converted one, no, you cannot. I was speaking, so I like how you did speaking, like our name. Uh, so highly of you to one of my good, good friends, uh, good, good girlfriends. Um, lo and behold, she's your first cousin. I was telling her uh, I would uh, work with you one day for designing and learning. Uh, for sure. Wait, who? Okay, wait. So you said my first cousin. So is it Teresa, Tashika, and um, Misi? Although, I mean, I could, she's more like a first cousin, but she's more like a, I think of her like a first cousin, she's like a second. Wait, which one of my cousins? And are you in Miami? Yeah, converted printer, you can't do it with. Nope. I don't know why. You, you keep getting these big orders. I don't understand why you're still shaking your boots. Hey, hey, hey. The vault is amazing. The sizing is what's most important. Yep. Yes. So once you get it, you always have access to it. So whatever news added there and you download them. Once you download those files to your computer, they're yours um, to be able to design with them. Not yours to go and resell it, but it's yours to be able to go and design with it. You have access to it for a, um, for a lifetime. Um, all right, any other questions? I have a little bit of time before my class starts. Um, and because I'm sitting here, I might even have a 10 minute. I know Chanel just put, don't forget the 10 minute grace period. Um, but basketball comes on. <laughs> And I'm actually here at my computer, so we may not even really have a major grace period. Do you have a video on proper use for the 2720? Yes, I've done a video. So um, you use it the same way that you use regular paper. You do have to cut it. You do not just put the roll in there. I mean, I've said that, I think it even says it on there that you don't just put the roll on there. You, you're creating longer sheets. So typically sheets are so eight and a half by 11, eight and a half by 14. Well, with the roll, you can do what the max is for that printer, which is 47 inches. So you can go eight and a half up to 47 inches. And there is a video that just shows you how to change it. Um, you just want to change your setting, your print setting to 8.5 by 47 inches. And even if you do 36 inches, you're still just using like that setting. So when you go to print, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna go to preferences right here where it says the document size, you're gonna go to user defined. You're gonna put in, you can see here eight and a half, you can go up to eight and a half by 47.24. I just do 47. You're going to label that like mine says HS Inc. sub row eight and a half by 40, um, eight and a half by 47. And you're just going to hit OK and selecting a size, you're going to choose that particular size um, to print on. And that's it. And everything else pretty much stays the same. The only thing that's different is because it is tacky paper, you're going to want to make sure that like everybody's printer is different. You're going to adjust your density down until you don't have like a bunch of major um, pinwheels but you do have to maintain, you're gonna have to clean your wheels often because it does have a coating on it where the ink in our paper, like the ink sits on top. That's why it has such great release. So you will have to clean your rollers. But yes, I have tons of videos that goes over that. 
and you just load it in the back. I don't do anything special. Um, when, it, when it comes time, I send it to print. Once it says, um, I don't put the paper in there right away. I'll wait for it. it says, okay, hey, you need to load paper. I put it in there, hit go, and it just prints. Um, okay, what trouble are you having? Um, I cannot get the premium senior yard sign to open in my cell. Well, what's happening? So you're telling me you can't get it to open. Does it just not open? Um, does it shut down? Um, what's happening with it? So I will not be like, that was a lot. Um, I'm doing it somewhat, but it won't be like the open form. Like I did like for the first year, um, no offense, but I don't feel like that was really appreciated by, for the amount of work that it took, like that was 30 days of, um, I mean, well, it was like, was it, was it 30 days? Like it was like every week. I think I did something was it every week or every day. I forget what it was, but it was a lot. <laughs> um, so I don't think that I will do it in that manner again. Um, I'll do like little things here and there, um, but I'll probably have like an ex like I have some plans that I want to do for it. But I really felt like um, the amount of work and what I put into that was not appreciated um, just in views and the fact that I did like two, three hour sessions. They were full on classes and it was underappreciated. So unfortunately, I will not be doing that again. Um, yeah, just will not be doing though. Like if I do that, it's those who um who really want to be a part of that and really want to learn what I'm going to teach during that time, then you know, it'll be more of a subscription type deal. I'll be doing it on YouTube. Uh, this is just a live QA because I didn't do one on Monday. So I'm just doing a live QA until it's time for my class to start. Um, did you use for the funeral program? Um, no. So I don't, I didn't print that at all. That was printed. I, I sent it off to the printer. It's printed with the laser printer on the, on their cover stock. Yeah. I didn't print that one at all. They want too many when it's that many, like 300, 350. I don't print them. I send them off to a printer. All right. The wheels are not catching the paper. Make sure that you have it all the way down. So, um, like some people say like it curls, like I'd never have an issue with it curling. Make sure that you are using a straight edge and making sure that the line is completely straight. And once, like I said, I don't put it in there right away. Sometimes, I, well, if it's like a really long piece, I don't put it in there right away. Um, but I go, I send it to print. Once it's like looking for the paper, I put it in there. You can use your hand there to make sure like it's all the way down. If it's not if it's not grabbing, that means that it's not all the way down, and that's the only reason why it could possibly not pick up. Um, the only other way for me to kind of diagnose it and figure out what is going on is, guys, I have groups. My groups are for you guys to post videos so that I can see it because you cannot post it to like my live videos. You can't post um, it to YouTube. You try and like send it to me and all that stuff. My groups are there to where, hey, this is what's happening. Look at it in real color. Like, I'm going to record a video. This is what it's doing. That's the best way for me to be able to help you is for you to record a video and post it to the group. Um, if it's crashing silhouette, I'm not sure which version you are using. Um, it is a really large file. It's a really, really large file. I might need to maybe like split them up because it's a large. So if you're... If your computer doesn't have like the um, graphics like uh, power or maybe like your um, memory and all that stuff, it might close it down because I have all the elements there. So I might need to like break that, especially if the one that's in the vault, break that one up. Um, but I end up putting like so many on there. And when I have to do more work, it costs more money because then it'll, I have to do more work. But because I was able just to have them in one file, I can make it more affordable. When I got to do extra work, it's going to cost you. Yes, um, these are always open sessions for um, when I do like these are for any questions. Yeah. Um, my Facebook groups are like, well, actually, I can't say that. It used to be Silhouettes Anonymous. So now my Silhouette group is Learn with the Professor. 
and my general group like products and stuff is honestly speaking so it's just like our product line s p i n k i n g so if you can post in either one of the groups so if i go here and i'm going to show you the name of our product so see how it is here Honestly speaking, our Facebook group is called that as well. It's called Honestly Speaking, the best face, the best summation group on Facebook, I think it's called. <laughs> um, and then my Soloholics Anonymous group was changed to Learn with the Professor. Um, in the description of this video is my link tree. If you go to the link tree, it will, um, I'm going to bring this over. There is a link that goes right to my groups. So here it shows, you're gonna just scroll down and it's gonna say connect. Also, oh, learn with the professor. Here is my HS Inc. YouTube. Here's my 365 YouTube. Here's my Solo Hawks Nines YouTube. This is my Honestly Speaking Facebook group. This is my Sublimation um, Facebook group. And then this is a video. Why is this one up here? How to split a full bleed shirt? That should not be there. And then there's other ones like, you know, Johnson's Plastics. You can use my code for 15% off, my link for Heat Transfer Warehouse. Um, if you're wanting to upgrade to Silhouette Studio Business Edition, Designer Edition, all that kind of good jazz, fonts and file resources. So it is full of useful and helpful links. So definitely save my link tree and refer back to it whenever you're trying to find something. But it's in the description of the video. Wait, um, I thought this was a, oh, okay, I just saw it. Thank you so much, Don. I think the questions came in so much and it pushed it up. Thank you, my love. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um... Um, I've been seeing videos around where they are adding bags. Is there a certain type of ink and paper? So in order to oil, add foil, you do have to use a toner or like a laser printer. So that's what the foil will stick to. If you're wanting to, you'll print out. So what you'll do is you'll print out the regular one on like a regular uh, inkjet printer. And then you're going to have um, that, right? You have to kind of start with the same file. That way it's in the same, like the right spot. You're going to then send it through um, the printed one. So you have it printed from your inkjet. You're going to send it through your laser printer and it's going to print. You can just print it in black. It doesn't have to be a color laser printer. Black and white printers actually work best for it because the way the toner goes down. So you're going to put it through your laser printer or even your white toner print if you have it, but you're going to have it print in um, black. And right where that is, once you put the foil that through your laminator the foil will only attach to the um the toner because it basically like, kind of like melts and it becomes an adhesive for toner i wish i had my wedding invitation because that's how i did my wedding invitations it was printed and then i sent it through and you know, i printed it on a laser printer and then i put the foil on it for like all of the certain parts to pop um but that's how you do that Um, I'm using the latest, oh, latest, oh, you have a pro. It might be that, um, like I said, I'll try and break it up. Um, especially for those in the vault, it'll be the first, like, that'll be the first place it's like broken up and that way it's not a bunch of like, cause it's, it's heavy on graphics and Silhouette Studio, like the latest versions, they're not really great with handling a lot of graphics. So I'll break it up and put it in the vault where it's separated. I learned about the print box today. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, hello, Miss Cindy Shep. How art thou? I go into class. Um, so get your questions in. And I'm actually probably going, while well, I'm waiting your questions, 
I probably would do that right now. Well, I'll set it up where it's split up for um, for the vault. before I forget. But it just means that you're gonna have to probably go to like different ones for different elements. Cause I'm not gonna put like, so I'll make one that has like all those elements on the side. And then um, why did you open? Cause I definitely did not open up you. Okay, that was kind of weird. All right, um, premium yard signs. Um. Premium yard sign templates. So if you have questions, you have about like 10 minutes or so to ask any questions that you have of me. And I'm gonna hop off of here because I have a session um, that starts with my, my bachelor's group in at 6.30. Okay, this is not the new one because it doesn't have it. So, um, no, that's the original. That's the original one. HSing Digital Premium Yard Signs. Where are you? Um, I don't think it's over here. Yeah, that's all my class stuff. Hey, where are you? All right, A, B, C, D, premium yard signs. Um, mm -mm. All right, um, I don't see any new questions being posted while I look for this. So I'm gonna let you guys go too much longer okay premium senior sign templates um let's see if that's the one and i will break it up i just i know the one that has yep that's the one that has and it's only until 2023 after that, you guys are on your own. You guys, um, if you had it this long, you know, hopefully you'll be able to like, you know, you'll have great fonts and you'll be able to put in your own fonts in there and change your year to whatever you want, even the class of. All right. So I'm going to split this up and I will have it in the vault. Um, if not tonight, check back tomorrow and I'll have it in there where they will be split up and hopefully it opens up for you. All right. All right, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hop off of here. Thank you guys so very much for joining me. Don't forget to visit our website, shop.hsinc365.com. Again, that is shop.hsinc365.com. The um, link there will take you basically to our link tree and... Um, uh, 
any of these will get you to wait a minute now. I just realized it's like for some reason it's not showing up here. But like if you go there, oh no, that's PNG tree. Why are you up here at the top of my stuff? Um, I just realized my my whole shop is gone off of here. Because before it used to show the ink and the paper up here. Go to HS Ink Products. I have no idea. It used to show my Shopify store at the top. But if you go to any of the paper and it'll be a drop down, it'll look through it through here. Choose what you want to the website. Um, we carry fast dry and tacky paper, all sizes, eight and a half by 11, eight and a half by 14, of my 17, 13, by 19. We are very consistent with having products in stock to ship our orders before 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, ship out the exact same day. Here's where you also can sign up for classes and trainings, such as my Essentials to Silhouette Studio, Learn Silhouette Studio in 30-day course, or it's more like a training um, because it's like, like that from here as well. All right, y'all, um, until next time. Oh, Compliment Your Small Business is on sale for $36.50. Um, I'm doing a new one. Once the new one is released, this one won't be available at this price. Um, so I suggest if you're wanting to learn, if you go onto it, it shows you like um, this class goes over like creating logos, creating thank you cards, um, uh, 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 business card layouts and all that kind of good jazz. So take a look at what the calendar says, what are um, logos, stickers and labels, cover photos, thumbnails, product tags, scratch off cards, um, IG posts, overlays, business cards, and thank you cards. <coughs> um, it originally was seventy-five dollars. It's on sale for thirty-six fifty. Once um, it, once I am, once I advertise for the new um, session, we're gonna kind of go into this a little bit more in detail, and it's gonna really, really be broken down for you. That won't be available. But hey, if you want to kind of get the foundation, or you may not be able to, um, one, it's gonna be over a hundred bucks. This one is great for you to learn how to use source video for these things that will complement your small. I'm trying to launch a website and create a landing page on Shopify. Do you have a video on how to do this? So as far as a landing page, uh, Silhouette Studio, I mean, Shopify doesn't really have like landing pages per se. Um, you can create it to look like a simple landing page if you don't wanna put your products on the front page. But I do have a class um, that teaches you Shopify. So Shopify is not really like a landing page. I would not use Shopify. Landing page just means it's more so informational. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily use Shopify for that once you're ready for e-commerce. And like, that's what I use. We use Shopify for our site. So I do have a class. So it's meant to be e-commerce. It's not really meant to be just a landing page. There are other other options for just a landing page. Um, but here, more of like a shop style. Um, under the classes and playbacks, there is a Shopify class. Um, so see, Shopify site set up, and I take you through everything, understanding the themes and all that kind of good jazz. So all that's in there um, if you want to take that to up your Shopify, but it's not for a landing page. All right. So until next time, have a great one. Continue to unlock your creativity and be incredible. Peace.